What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the 30 on 30. We're sticking in the east still. Um, today, we're going to talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. We're heading up north to sunny Toronto and to talk about the young, up-and-coming, dynamic team in the American League East who I think is in, in prime position to keep moving upward and being more competitive. Um, and, uh, you know, I think they'll make some moves this offseason that will continue to make them better. So some of them, you know, most of them, will, I don't think they'll be sexy moves, but I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, use the young dynamic player to get in, you know, a bigger piece. But there's enough in free agency, in my opinion, that they can bring in to help them kind of take things to the next level, um, and particularly on the veteran front as well. So, um, by the way, welcome to the channel if you're new first time here. I hope you enjoyed enough to come back. Please hit that subscribe button, that notification. It's really helpful to the channel's growth, and uh, I want to continue making this into one of the better, better channels out there. And so I thank you all, um, new folks and you know people that have been here with me since the beginning for your support. It's really, really helpful to the channel, and you guys are what make the channel great. So the 30 on 30, basically I'm breaking down all 30 teams, identifying needs, um, You know what I think they should do, and my predictions what I think they'll actually do. And check a look in the description down below if you haven't seen it yet. All the teams in the West, all the teams in the Central already done. And a couple teams in the East as well. So, um, by the way, after this, I'm looking at my baseball book. We're going to go back East. We're going to talk about the Philadelphia Phillies. That's going to be my next video after this. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and notify notification so you know exactly when it's coming out. Toronto Blue Jays. Um, you know, here's this my baseball book. I uh, identified some needs like shortstop, starting pitching, um, third base. Now, I know Vlad Guerrero Jr. has kind of alternated third base, uh, first base, but I think with his body type, he'd be better off being the permanent permanent guy at first base. Um, and he's just a big boy, and I know he's leaned out a little bit this offseason, but you know they, they have pretend propensity to have a lot of lower body injuries, and he's such a violent hitter that he's uber talented, but a violent hitter and a really, really good hitter. Um, I don't want to see him get hurt, and I think first base would be a safer position. It would keep him healthy so that he could uh, really let that bat do its do its talking. So, um, you know, first base, I, I think he's an, an ideal spot for him, meaning third base would be an opportunity to bring in a free agent. Um, what do I think they do should do? I think they should bring in somebody like Justin Turner of, of the Dodgers, or formerly of the Dodgers now. Um, he is a free agent, but he's still got pop in his bat. He's very productive. He's a good veteran presence. He'll come in and help mentor younger players. And I think I think he still has a couple years. I mean, you could probably get him on a two-year deal. At this point, he's not going to cost four or five years. And uh, moving over to the national uh, to the American League up north, I think he'd be a good addition to this lineup and to just to the team overall. So um, I would look out for you know for a move like that. I don't see them trading for one of these bigger, bigger third basemen. But I could be wrong. I think I think his Justin Turner is a perfect fit there. I do see the Dodgers probably bringing in his replacement this offseason. So, um, you know, Toronto and Justin Turner to me are just are just kind of a, a logical match, and are, and I think a really really good fit at this point. Um, starting pitching, I think they should bring in Taiwan Walker. We'll bring back Taiwan Walker. Um, and, uh, you know, power on, pitched well last year. He won't break the bank. And, again, he'll give that necessary depth. I also think they should bring in, you know, somebody like a Michael Waka, uh, another veteran on who, arm who can just give them innings. I say this in a lot of my videos. This is the time to bring in depth pieces. So if you need one starter, maybe bring in two. Bring in a backup infield, a backup outfield. Give your veteran players, especially your superstars and players that might be injury prone, some protection. There's a ton of free agents this offseason. And with the uncertain market and the financial state, state of baseball, it's a good time to get a lot of guys on the cheap, potentially. So, um, or at least a reasonable contract. So now's the time to capitalize on it. Okay. So I think they should bring in two starters. Um, shortstop. Now I think I think they should also bring in a relief pitcher as well. Um, even a Brad Hand would be a good, good, you know, good, uh, a good signing there. Young power lefty. Um, I think he, he's a sneaky, uh, sneaky good free agent potential option for the Blue Jays. So I would look out for them to make some kind of flashier, unexpected move this offseason, uh, particularly since they're upward trending and you know they're they're on the verge of really, really being really, really good. So, uh, but in terms of shortstop, I think you should bring in somebody like Freddie Galvis, another veteran. He's been around. He's consistent. It's not going to cost a boatload of money, and he can play every day or mostly every day. And, you know, even if they bring in a player like him and then a player like Jerks and Profar, 
who can play infield and outfield. It gives Galvis a break. It gives Guerrero a break. It gives their outfielders a break. So, and that's what I mean by depth. You bring in somebody who can play multiple positions, give these guys a day off. So instead of them, you know, having to play 150 games, they could play 135, 140. Give the legs a break every fifth game. Give the body break every five games. So it's a, it's a great way of keeping players healthy. Um, and I hope that's. I think it's something that they should consider. Now, moving on to the other side, what I think they'll actually do, somewhat similar. I think they're going to bring in Justin Turner. So this is one of the scenarios where I think they're going to do what I actually think they should do. Um, and uh, like I said, it's a logical fit. And uh, I, I see him. I could see him. You know, kind of like Josh Donaldson, just bringing. Bring in some pop, uh, maybe staying a little bit healthier than Donaldson did, but bring in some right-handed pop, um, you know, to that stadium and uh, to that lineup, giving it some stability. He's still solid at the, uh, on, th on defense for third base, and uh, I just think he, he'll be a good fit in that lineup. Turner, and imagine you get Turner and Guerrero, and you got who? Yeah, you got Bichette. Like you have a lot of guys there, and it would just be a nice. It'd be a pretty well-balanced lineup. You add, and then you add somebody like a, you know, a shortstop or a pro far, you give it more versatility as well. Versatility is good right now at this point. Lefty, righty balance, just versatility, multiple positions, um, and maybe guys who can you know run the bases and steal some bases too. Now, starting pitching, I, I, I see them actually bringing in, you know, uh, like uh, re-signing Taiwan Walker, but I also see them uh, adding somebody like J.A. Happ. Um, he was there before. He was with the Phillies before. He's just a good fit there as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think you can probably get him on a two-year deal, a good solid veteran. Didn't pan out, unfortunately, with the Yankees. I have him going to one of their one of their American League East rivals in Toronto. So, And, again, I see them bringing in two starters, complement one righty, one lefty, and help give the, the rotation some balance and some veteran leadership. Um, you know, and, and he showed this past year, towards the second half of the year, he still has some pretty decent pitching in him. So, um, you know, he'd be, a, I think, a cost-effective, solid pickup for the Blue Jays. And if they brought him and Walker, that's nice depth for their rotation. It really, really is. You know, um, I don't see them bringing back Robbie Ray. Uh, I see Robbie Ray going elsewhere. Um, but that'd be okay. You know, Happen and Walker, pretty good. Pretty good. And in terms of shortstop, um, I see them bringing in either Freddie Galvis or Andrelton Simmons. Simmons is a fit in a lot of places. Um, I don't see him going back to the Angels. Um, but he, he could be a fit in Philadelphia. He could be a fit in New York. He could be a fit in a bunch of places. I see him as a good fit. He's a really, really good defensive player. And with the turf, the Astro turf, I think it's more suitable to a, a, a good, solid defensive shortstop. And he does that. He's one of the best clubs at shortstop in Major League Baseball. And I think he'd be a better fit there um, than in a lot of other places, especially with that ball just taking off on the turf. He's, he's, he's pretty much a whiz with the glove, so he would help protect that infield defense, protect the pitching, give it some good backup. I imagine bringing, in, bringing him in and, and Justin Turner, that's a heck of a defensive third base and shortstop combo. So, um, and it gives a lot of balance to the lineup and versatility to the lineup too. But again, he's a little bit lighter on the bat than your D.D. Gregorius type, but um, he's much better with the glove, and I think for AstroTurf stadiums, somebody with a better glove, and again, he's still relatively young, um, somebody with a better glove would be, is a more ideal fit for a stadium like that. So, Angleton Simmons is my pick for shortstop for the Toronto Blue Jays. That, I think, you know, w with a combination of those types of moves, and obviously they have other needs, as all teams do, and I'm sure that they'll, you know, bring in a, a you know, player here and a, and a player there or potentially make a trade or whatever it is. Um, they'll address a couple other needs, and uh, but these are the most, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, significant moves I see them making. And again, they're not sexy, not flashy, but they're moves that can make them better. And at this point, I don't see them giving up, you know, a, 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 Dante Bichette to bring in somebody like Nolan Arenado it just doesn't make sense. Um, or Dante Bichette to you know next year if they want to move in and 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 invest in a shortstop, well it's a free agent bonanza next year. Instead of giving up a ton of players now, I could just wait and just add incrementally to this very very talented lineup and very very talented infield and outfield. So um, that's my take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Let me know what you think. Leave your, you know, some feedback in the comments down below. And if you do subscribe, let me know in the comments too so I can personally thank you. I really appreciate your support. 
And uh, like I said, we're going to go to Philly next, talk about the Phillies. We're staying in the East. We're about halfway through. And uh, keep that, keep your eye on that because uh, it's coming out every single day. So you won't miss a beat. Thanks so much for, for watching. Again, be safe. Look out for each other. See you in Philly.